CC is probably our favourite flat earther. No, who are we kidding? He absolutely is our favourite flat earther. And today, on Flat Earth Friday, he has done the unthinkable. He has saved the heliocentric model. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Just to remind everyone, the brand new giant Simon Dan logo t-shirt is still available in the Simon Dan shop. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description uh, and there's a few other extra bits and pieces in there too. Please do check it out. Right back to today's video uh, where CC is in his favourite place, his van. And he's doing what he loves to do most dunk on the globe. The trouble is, he thinks he's found a massive issue with the heliocentric model. But as usual, he just doesn't understand it enough. Take it away, CC. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, CC here, Chris, from New York, uh, Westchester County. It's 9-8-23, and uh, today's a Friday. I like to give you a little something to think about on a Friday just in case if I'm unable to put a video out during the weekend. Um, Don't we all Chris? Fridays are for flat earth after all aren't they? What does July 8th mean to you? Um, I guess it means the start of summer here in the UK and the endless complaining of how hot it is. For most people it's four days after July 4th weekend, right? No, for most Americans, not most people. Of course, that's what we all thought. That is a day that 99% of Earth, the impossible ball um, that people think we live on, is lit up with some sort of sunlight. All the continents, everywhere. That is incorrect, Chris. It's the day that 99% of the world's population gets sunlight, not 99% of the world's surface. That would be impossible. And as you can see from this image, that also includes the twilight zones. So that means below me, as that little saying goes, uh, what are you digging for China? Is China. That's right. That's right. China is on the other side of the ball. It's actually not China. If you figure it out properly for you, Chris, in Westchester County, New York, directly below you on Earth, is just off the southwestern coast of Australia. But hey ho. In case you're wondering from me here on the south coast of the UK, the opposite side of the globe is just about by New Zealand. Hi, Planner Walk. Correct, yeah. Okay, so let me get this straight. So 99% of all the continents is in daylight. No, 99% of the world's population. However, there are some continents that are on the other side of the ball that are lit. Not really. One half of the entire planet is pretty much ocean. The Pacific Ocean. Yeah, you know, I've been trying to figure out, you know, how to explain this to somebody uh, who lives on a, who thinks they live on a ball. And I think I figured it out, guys. This is what it is. Check it out. Listen, listen very carefully. Um, Get ready, everyone, because despite it being clearly simple to explain, Chris has figured it out for us. I think for that to happen on a ball, okay, there has to be two suns. Yeah, that's right. It's hiding behind one sun. And on July 8th, the second sun comes out and lights up the other side of the ball. There you go. Awesome. I figured it out. That's the explanation I've been trying to tell people. All right, who live on a ball. That's it. Yeah, he really did say that. Chris thinks that the only explanation for the heliocentric model for 99% of the world's population to be in sunlight is for there to be two suns. 
Despite the fact that I can show quite nicely on my globe here how it's achieved with just one light source. Dear oh dear. No, it's absolutely impossible for 99% of Earth to be lit up on that particular day with one sun. <laughs> it's impossible. Totally agree, Chris, but as we've already stated, it's 99% of the world's population, not 99% of the land. If you'd have just read that fact correctly, then your video wouldn't exist. All right, so now in a flat Earth model, that works out fine. Um, but it also shows how local that sun is. Why isn't it a full 100%? You see what I'm saying? Uh, I, so on a flat Earth, that date is very significant. And I, I think that should be the flat Earth day of the year. There are many other flat Earth days, but I think that should definitely be in the mix up there with the top of the flat Earth days, July 8th, every year. Of course, we have to wait about, I don't know, six or seven months for it to happen again, but that's all right. I'm sure we'll all stand by for it and we'll be sitting there and I'll be talking to somebody from China and saying, hey, what's up, man? Uh, you're not in dark, are, are you? No, nope. we're in sunlight too. Oh dear, Chris really is confused. He thinks this happens during the Southern Hemisphere summer as well. China, of course, by the way, is in the Northern Hemisphere, something else that Chris is confused about. Also, how does this work on a flat Earth then? How does your local sun all of a sudden decide it's gonna throw all of its light across 99% of your flat Earth? And you still think it means countries, not population, and that makes it even worse. There is no logical explanation as to why the sun would do that. It's just nonsense. About six months ago, well, maybe four months ago, they were exactly, I believe, 2,400 or maybe even lower than that. Let's just say 2,100 cases um, that were recorded in the entire world. Okay, in the entire world, 21 ca 2,100 cases of this mysterious thing that seems to be floating around. Now, all of a sudden, so it's basically gone, it's, it's been destroyed, you know, it's gone. So what I think is these 2,100 people, I think they went from country to country, state to state, and they must have now infected everybody, because everybody seems to be sick now here. Good job, guys. Hang on, he's gone from the existence of two sons to COVID. That's quite a tangent, isn't it? Let's get back to the topic at hand, shall we, Chris? Let's put all the countries to war. Let's try it. Uh, he's been trying it now for, I don't know, the administration has been trying it for like six or eight months now by putting everybody to war, you know? Let's start a world war. Uh, well, that's not going to happen because there's a treaty out there. Yeah, and you know what that treaty is? That means you cannot go down to Antarctica. You cannot set up shop down there. You can't wander around down there. You can't see anything down there. Does anybody question that at all? No, because that's not what the treaty says. You can go there and you can do all these things. It's just very silly to do that because it's very inhospitable and extremely cold. There's some basic things that are here that can wake people up, all right? Just basic things. The Antarctica Treaty is the first basic thing. That's 101, okay? Yeah, 101 in how to not research properly. If you don't see a problem with that, that you can't go investigate one single place, one single place you can't go investigating, you can't go down there. And if you dare go down there, you're going to get arrested. And that's how it is. I'll tell you what, Chris, here is a challenge for you. You pull out the exact line from the Antarctic Treaty that tells you you're explicitly not allowed to go there. The exact quote, the exact line. You do that and I'll listen to you. That's the challenge. Now I think if everyone pops over to Chris's channel and lets him know about this challenge so he can see it, that would be really good. However, please be nice.
everyone. Well, there we go. Do we think Chris will be able to complete that challenge? Let me know in the comments. But for now, of course, we're all done and dusted for another Flat Earth Friday. It's been a pleasure to have you. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And of course, a thumbs up too if you like this video in particular. I've been Simon and Dan. Have yourselves a cracking weekend and I'll see you all on Tuesday for a person called Divergent who's talking about hidden lands. See you then.